Okay, hello everybody. I don't know if you can see this, but yes, I have a new piece of equipment today. I've got something holding up my camera in the middle of the uh, shed. So it's not very good, is it? <laughs> I'm trying to get it so that it's straight for you. But I think straight might be a little bit too much to ask. Perhaps I'll try moving it a little bit closer. Not this bit. Okay, perhaps that's closer. Somebody last time said they wanted it closer. So, how is this? Okay, a little bit higher up for the top bits. Okay. Now I hope that's all visible. I think it is. There's a word down there that's missing. That's better. Um, yeah, the main thing is that you can see the words on the board. That's what I'm hoping. So I'm hoping it's much better quality today. It's actually the same camera, same microphone. It's all in my phone, my smartphone. Um, and I'm just using something which kind of holds on to one of the purlins. That's one of the long pieces of wood that goes through the shed. It holds on to it and yeah, it looks great. I'm really pleased with it. So you can thank my wife for buying this. She actually bought it for herself, but then gave it to me. She felt sorry for me because she realised I didn't have anything to hold up my camera. So now she's going to buy another one for herself. Anyway, let's get on with what we're doing today, which is Line of Duty. This is the third episode of Line of Duty. I make these ebooks for my students and I just write down the vocabulary. I make up some grammar questions as well, which could be about subjunctive, conditionals, tenses, articles, reporting verbs. It could be about any one of a number of grammar topics in English. Um, so I test you on your grammar for that episode and I also test you on the vocabulary. And there are exercises in the ebook that test your vocabulary, your grammar, and there are also discussion questions as well. Um, but in these lessons, we just go through the vocabulary. I just think it's so important to repeat vocabulary. Um, some people seem, seem to think that we learn things without repetition. I think they're crazy. We learn everything with repetition, absolutely everything. If you learn to ride a bike, you do it by repeatedly trying <laughs> yeah same with swimming same with speaking english the same with mathematics and the same with any school subject so we're going to repeat this vocabulary today and hopefully if you're doing the exercises in the ebook you're watching the show you're watching these vocabulary lessons and you're retelling the show to someone and i think that's very important you really ought to be able to remember all of these words and you ought to get very uh, very good very quickly now one second because I've forgotten my pen and my coffee. So I'll come back here. I think the light is a lot better today as well. So uh, yeah, I'm pleased to see that uh, the quality is slowly but surely improving. Now, the very first expression is quite a rude expression in this episode, to go tits up. Um, it's informal, it's not really rude. There are ruder expressions, but I wouldn't say something like that in front of my kids personally. When they get to maybe 14, 15, okay, maybe I might, but I certainly wouldn't at the moment because they're quite little, they're both younger than 10. But it's worth remembering that this is very similar to a cock-up, which came up in another episode. So when something goes tits up, it's a failure, a mess. You've messed it up completely. And there are other rude words you could use with up, of course. Um, swear words, I mean, which would mean the same thing of a total disaster, a total failure. So if something goes tits up, it's a total failure, a disaster. And I think the police operation went tits up because two men died after it. And so, of course, it's certainly um, a failure, a total disaster. And a balls up or a cock up, it's the same. It's a mistake. And it's a it's where you, you fail. At, you could use it for a question. Oh, I made a cock up when I answered that question. But it could be anything. You could say that... Um, some disaster that happened a lot of people died in a large fire in london and you might say this was recently a few years ago or a couple of years ago in the tower and you might say well it was a cock up from the fire services now i'm not saying that i don't know if anyone out there works in the fire services i have family who work in the ambulance services and so i certainly don't want to criticize the fire service but um if you say it's a cock up it means they made a mistake that's all i want to, the only point i want to make 
And so there have been a few cock-ups cock in the uh, World Cup um, recently. I don't know if anybody's been watching the games, but if a goalkeeper um, makes, makes a mistake, you can say it was a cock-up. Maybe he throws it to the opponent, something like that. OK, if you take over a business, you take control of that business. I think this one's quite an easy one, so I'm not going to spend long on it. But if they have it in this episode, they also have to break off a relationship. And you should always remember that you can break off a marriage, you can break off an engagement, you can break off a relationship. But you can also say we broke up. And that's the phrasal verb, the intransitive phrasal verb. There's no object there when you just say we broke up. But or you can say I broke up with her last week and that means you split up you've stopped having the relationship so you can break off a relationship or you can break up with someone so they mean the same thing but they're used differently now in this episode we had to act on information to act on complaints and this means to act in response to information in response to complaints it's very very similar to follow up on information, follow up on complaints. And that came up, that phrasal verb cropped up in episode two. So the, you notice that these phrasal verbs are being repeated and it's the best way to learn them. Just keep doing them, doing them and doing them again. They had the phrasal verb to come by something, which means to accidentally stumble upon something, happen upon something, come across something, find by chance, find by accident. So when you come by some information, it sounds like that information just suddenly appeared and it was completely accidental. You didn't intentionally find it. When you come up with an idea, a plan or a suggestion, you think it up. You think up a new idea, you think up a new plan. So it's another good one to come up with an idea, a plan or a suggestion. When you give someone backup, you give them support and you can back someone up as well. It's very similar to stand by someone. When you stand by, if a woman stands by her husband, she backs him up, she supports him. She doesn't um, abandon him in his moment of need. Okay, to be up to something. This one's cropped up several times already. It's come up in a few episodes and it's very important. The reason why it comes up so often is because we use it so often. So to be up to something can mean two different things. It can mean to be capable of. If you say, I am not up to going into work today, it means I'm not capable of going into work today. If you say, I am not up to finishing this exercise, it means I'm not capable of finishing this exercise. I haven't got the skills or the knowledge required for this exercise. So in this TV show, I think the guy, the, um, the main poli corrupt policeman, said um, that he arrived at the scene of the crime and there were two of uh, two policemen there at the scene of the crime and he thought that the two of them were up to the task and he meant that they were capable of carrying out their duties without calling for backup they were up to the task just the two of them okay um, second meaning of to be up to means to be doing something suspicious and they used that meaning as well in this episode. I can't remember how exactly, but they did use both meanings in this episode. So it shows you that both of the both meanings are fairly common for this to be up to something. Um, to reflect on also has two meanings. If you reflect on something carefully and deeply, that means you think about something. To reflect does mean to think or examine something. However, it also has a second meaning. Light is reflected by a mirror, yeah, or, or, or a, a, the surface of um, some water. Light is reflected on the surface of water. And so it also means to create a good or bad impression of. And this is how they used it in this episode. He said that none, the corrupt policeman said that none of my bad behaviour reflects, none of my behaviour reflects badly on my friends, on my colleagues, that's what he was saying. And he meant that none of his behaviour created a bad impression of anybody else in his team. It didn't reflect badly on any, anybody else, it only reflected badly on him. So it only gave him a bad impression. It only gave people a bad impression of him. It didn't give people a bad impression of his colleagues. Okay, so it didn't reflect badly on his colleagues. You know, if you're in a class at school, and you get top marks, that might reflect well on your classmates. It certainly might reflect well on your teacher as well and show that perhaps it's a good teacher. He or she is a good teacher. 
Okay, so that's to reflect on. To be cordoned off means to be fenced off. And we can say that. You can say an area was fenced off. In England, all of the gardens are fenced off, yeah? But if you have a crime scene, and it's a really serious crime, the police will cordon off that area. And it just means make a barrier with that funny police tape that they use, that yellow or white police tape, do not cross. Well, that means it's a police cordon and they are cordoning off the area. So to fence something off or to cordon something off, it means to um, make it a place which is no one can walk into or nobody ordinary can walk into, only policemen can walk into. OK, to muscle in on, they spoke about drug dealers in this episode, muscling in on the business of some other drug dealers. So to muscle in on, it means to um, it means to, to take a piece of somebody's business, usually. And usually it's like mafia or drug dealers or something like that. Um, OK, if anybody's asking about how to learn new words, one word, repetition. OK, if you're not repeating those words, you're not going to remember them. So to tag along, it means to accompany. But this is an interesting phrasal verb because this one usually is used when that person is not wanted. When, that pers when, when the group does not want that person to accompany them, that person tags along. It sounds like the person is just following even though nobody else perhaps wants that person to follow. So very often used when you accompany someone but they don't want you to accompany them, OK? That would be to tag along. And I think one of the detectives asked if he could tag along with some of his colleagues to go and see the scene of the crime. Um, I think he felt like they wouldn't want him there or that he wasn't allowed to be there for some reason or other. OK, to make out is a synonym of pretend. It has at least two meanings, certainly. Um, if you want to find out my Facebook pages or YouTube pages, use the search bar. Um, so to make out means to pretend and uh, it, it means two things though. If you say I can't make out the sign it means I can't see the sign. If you say I can't make out what they're saying it means I can't hear what they're saying. So that's one meaning of make out. When you it, Very often it's used for I can't perceive. Very often I, I can't make out what he's saying. I can't make out what the sign says. Very often used in the negative. But a second meaning of make out is pretend. And if you say he made out he was a businessman, it's clear. It means he pretended that he was a businessman. If you say he made out that he was an expert, it means he pretended to be an expert. So just pretend, make out, that's all it means. To come clean was an excellent expression from this uh, episode. If you come clean, you tell the truth. You tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So if you come clean about a murder, you own up to the murder. Own up to would be another phrasal verb, which is very similar to come clean. I think come clean is more idiomatic because clean is obviously an adjective and not a preposition. But um, yeah, they're very similar. Come clean about and own up to, they're basically the same. OK, to swing by means to drop by, to drop round, to pop round, to pop by. There's loads of them in English, loads of phrasal verbs which mean call in on someone, visit someone for a brief period. Swing by, drop by, pop round, drop round. There's loads of them. OK, stand by. We've already said this means back someone up. So if your wife stands by you, she backs you up. If scientists make a breakthrough... It means they make an important discovery, a really important discovery. So maybe when they dis when Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin, it was a breakthrough. Um, when when Copernicus said that um, it's more logical that the Earth is in the centre and not the Sun in the, is in the centre, um, he made a breakthrough. So we could call that a breakthrough. But if policemen are searching for a criminal and they make a breakthrough, they make an important discovery with the evidence. So it's another way you could use breakthrough. It's not only science. OK, if the police receive a tip-off, it means they receive information about um, a crime. OK, somebody tips them off about a crime. It may be about a potential crime, one in the future, or it may be about something that's already happened. But a tip-off is information received by the police. They Somebody tips the police off, because yes, we can use that as a verb, and that's why I've got it in the phrasal verb section. It's a noun made from the phrasal verb to tip someone off, like inform on someone. To make up, 
means to lie, to fabricate, to invent. So you could make up all sorts of details in your, the story you give to the police. And if you then use those details in court, you're committing a crime, you're committing perjury. You are lying in court and you have made up the whole story. And of course, that's illegal. And if you go along with someone, it may be a company. It can have that meaning. I went along with my friends to the park. Sure. But it also means um, acquiesce or play along with is very similar to this one. If you go along with someone, it means you agree to um, act as if what they say is true, even though you don't believe it. But you go along with them just to see where it leads you. Um, so it can be used in a number of different ways here. It can mean to acquiesce, to accept that what somebody's saying is true, even though you're not convinced. But it could mean um, to um, pretend that you believe, to humour somebody, to pretend that you believe with what, to believe you believe what they say, um, just to see where it leads you. Okay, if you want some more help with that one, do put questions under the video. And by the way, questions are best at the end of the lesson because obviously I'm dis describing these words. So if you have any in a few minutes, I can answer them. To get out of hand, if a situation gets out of hand, it's out of your control. It's out of your grasp. And so the situation has got out of hand. People have got carried away. They've got overexcited and nobody can control the situation anymore. So it's usually negative when things get out of hand. To pervert the course of justice is to try to make sure that um, justice doesn't happen. So anytime you're covering something up, um, I can't answer questions, guys, not at the moment. Anytime you're co uh, covering something up, you are perverting the course of justice. Yeah, you're trying to manipulate um, people's perception of events so that justice isn't done, so that the murderer isn't caught or the criminals aren't caught. So any kind of covering up or hushing up is perverting the course of justice. Money laundering is where the proceeds of illegal criminal business are hidden in some kind of way, usually in a business which is legitimate. Um, so if money is being funneled or um, money is being directed towards uh, uh, a legitimate business, but it's from a criminal enterprise. That's called money laundering. A one night stand is where somebody sleeps w with another person for only one night and there's no more relationship. I think that's one's quite well known. To let the dust settle is an idiom and it means that you won't act until everything has calmed down. Yeah, let the dust settle and then perhaps proceed with whatever actions you're planning on taking. But let the dust settle first. So usually the situation's got out of control, it's got out of hand, you decide to let the dust settle and then act. To let off steam means to relax. You let off steam, you're relaxing in some kind of way. So we go on holiday to let off steam in my family. No smoke without fire is an idiom which means that if perhaps there are rumours that somebody is a bad person, and um, you don't know yourself, but one of your friends says, no smoke without fire. Where's the smoke come from? Why are there all these bad rumours about the person if they're a good person? That's the idea that if they're, it may be rumours, but it could be something else. But the idea is that there are signs that this person is a bad person. So it's most likely that he is a bad person. There must be a reason for these bad rumours and these signs. OK, the last phrasal verb, because this one is actually a phrasal verb, to weigh up, meaning consider. You have to weigh up the evidence if you're a policeman. You have to consider all the evidence to find out who the criminal is. But if you're an English student, you have to weigh up all of the different grammar rules in order to, in order to find out exactly whether your, um, well, whether the sentence is correct or not correct. You have to weigh up all the rules. You have to consider all the rules. So that can be used in a lot of different ways that way up and it certainly just means consider. And you should remember here to weigh in on. When you weigh in on a debate or an argument, you give your opinion, your perspective about an opinion or a, about a certain topic, a, very often a controversial topic. So um, if I were to weigh in on the question of Crimea, that's a 
controversial topic. It's a political question. People feel very strongly either for or against. Very few people are neutral. And so I would weigh in on that topic. And I'm not going to right now. I'm going to take your questions now because it's the last phrasal verb. So if you have any questions, I'm in an ideal position now. Um, yeah, I think it's very much advanced level. I think all of these words are pretty much advanced level. I wouldn't consider them to be pre-intermediate or intermediate. Of course not. Um, most of these, most of this vocabulary is for the top level for sure. Any other questions? That was a good question. It was a relevant question. And it was nice and clearly, um, clearly asked. So I understood exactly what Paulina meant. No other questions? No? Because this is an ideal position for me. For once my, um, and it's Paulina Vershinina. Um, for once my camera is right up here, on right in front of me. So I'm in a perfect position to answer questions. It's never like this. Usually it's half falling off the chair and it's just about to fall off and I can't answer any questions. So, any other questions? I'm not going to wait forever. I've got a lesson coming very soon at 10 o'clock and it's already quarter past nine. Okay, if there are no other questions then we're going to call it a day. But thanks everybody for watching. Please, if you do want to know more about Line of Duty, all you need to do is go to my website. The link's going to be in the corner of this video several times. All you've got to do is buy that lesson and uh, all of the PDFs are available on my website. Um, I can't remember exactly how much this one is, probably seven or eight or maybe nine pounds, I'm not sure. But um, you, that the ebook will give you exercises for all five episodes in season one. So that should help you with learning these words. OK, see everybody next time. Very nice. Thanks for watching the lesson. And please don't forget to subscribe and click on the like button. Thanks for watching. See you all soon.